Hello, everyone. David from Mortgage Choice. It is Tuesday, the 6th of August, and the Reserve Bank just made the announcement that they're keeping interest rates on hold. Uh, this was expected. I think last week they came out with inflation figures that were uh, more on the positive side, uh, where um, headline and mean inflation was coming back under control, or at least more to what they're hoping to see. Um, still a fair way to go, and it looks like we're going to continue to see higher interest rates for the next six months at least before we start to see a bit of a reprieve. But there are signs in the market that we're starting to see some some cracks. And those cracks, while they're bad news, it also means that we're getting closer to the point where the Reserve Bank can start pulling interest rates back down again. Uh, let's get into the announcement, and then we'll uh, talk about how this is going to affect everyone going forward. All right, so just a quick outline. We'll talk about um, the uh, RBA media release. We'll go through uh, the consumer price inflation or the CPI. Uh, we'll talk about the benefits and the changes for first home buyers, upgraders, and investors, and then we'll talk about interest rates at the end. Um, for the RBA statement, it's pretty much copy, uh, paste, and repeat uh, from the last, I don't know, 24 times that we've heard from the Reserve Bank. Um, inflation remains above target and is proving persistent. This is pretty much verbatim what they've been saying for the last 12 months straight. Uh, the outlook remains highly uncertain. Again, the exact same comment. And returning to inflation to target is their priority. Again, exactly what they've been saying for a long period of time. Now, in the end, we've heard a lot in the press about uh, the potential for interest rates to increase. Uh, we've actually seen the opposite of that um, around the globe. Um, I think it was England that decreased interest rates for the first time since 2020. Uh, they decreased their rates last month. Um, there's uh, a lot of speculation in the United States that they're going to decrease their interest rates. And usually Australia is close to follow behind on what these other major economies are doing. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't start to see a little bit of a change in tune from the Reserve Bank, especially if the signs are correct that we're starting to see a bit more weakness in the economy. Um, there were some other figures that came out that um, everyone's uh, been um, keeping an eye on. Uh, one is the uh, job numbers in the United States. Their unemployment rate has started to increase. And we've also seen the same in Australia, where our unemployment numbers are starting to increase. And again, all of those are signs that the economy is starting to struggle. And if the economy struggles, it means that we'll start spending less, and that's going to bring down inflation. The hard part with inflation is that because interest rates are so high to combat inflation, it means that mortgages are more expensive, and it means that rent then goes up and is more expensive. And that also exacerbates inflation. So it's like this beast that continues to feed itself. But hopefully, we're getting towards the end of this cycle. Uh, what I would recommend to everyone out there is that you just need to continue to abide and carry yourself through uh, this next six months until we start to see a bit more um, of a softening in the interest rates. Now, on to CPI. Uh, this is the um, CPI since, what, the 1960s. And you can see where it peaked in the 70s. It peaked again in uh, the uh, 80s. And then it started coming down in the 1990s. And it's been this nice between 2 and 3% band, this purple bar, for the last 20 or 30 years. Um, but we saw this massive uptick in inflation after COVID, and that's what we're currently experiencing now. It's starting to come back down, but we're not quite at this purple bar yet, which the Reserve Bank wants to see. So hopefully we start to see a, a few more encouraging signs over the coming months, but any encouraging signs also means that we're going to have some pain in the economy by way of job losses, small businesses closing, um, so there is some pain to come. Now, for first home buyers, uh, I mentioned this before, the first home guarantee scheme is a fantastic scheme uh, put on by the federal government to help clients avoid the need for lenders mortgage insurance. Um, it's the best scheme that I've ever seen the government come out with. Um, I think it's fantastic. Um, they're also talking about a federal buy uh, back scheme or a federal um, uh, investing scheme similar to the Victorian Home Buyers Fund. So um, we'll keep you posted as that gets uh, revealed or a bit more information comes out about that. Um, but for now, uh, pre approvals are super important, especially as we come into this busier time of year for property listings. There'll be a lot more people in the market actively looking for properties, a lot more properties uh, up for sale. And so it's really important that we get pre-approvals in place and you allow at least two or three weeks for us to do that because banks don't treat pre-approvals as priority. Uh, some banks are also now ignoring body corp fees. And this is important because most first home buyers 
uh, who in the past, when interest rates were at 2%, first home buyers were either building their first home or they were buying a detached home uh, because they could afford the higher mortgage. Uh, now the interest rates are as high as they are. The clients are not having to buy their first home for 300000 400000 500000 that range. And it usually means that they're buying properties that are either units or townhouses. And units and townhouses come with body corp fees. And those body corp fees add to your cost of living and therefore decrease your borrowing capacity. And so some banks have started to ignore those body corp fees. So if you are in that market, that uh, that purchase price band of between three and six hundred thousand dollars, you might benefit from using a bank that will ignore these body corp fees uh, to help with your borrowing capacity. For upgraders, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're coming into the busiest time of year for property listings. Uh, usually, the periods between September and November and February and April are the busiest times of year. It's where we see the most properties being listed. And this, the spring in Melbourne is usually the time um, when you'll see a massive increase in properties up for sale. Um, so for those of you that are thinking about upgrading, it's best that we have a chat now because uh, getting a pre-approval is going to be key. And that usually takes three or four weeks to be put in place. Uh, during that discussion that we have about your pre-approval, we'll also talk about the options between simultaneous settlement and bridging finance. There are pros and cons to each. Uh, so we want to go through those and make sure that you understand what your options are. And uh, uh, depending on which option you prefer, or which option you have to take, that will tell you what you need to do with your existing home. And if it is something where you'll need to list your existing home, get it on the market first and sell it before you start looking to buy. Uh, for investors, we're starting to see a lot more clients that are purchasing properties through their self-managed super fund. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's because of the uh, increased interest rates where clients are struggling to borrow in their own personal names. And so they're using the self-managed super fund as a way to purchase outside of their own personal names uh, or what the reason is. But we started to see a lot more interest in SMSF. Um, and then another thing to note is that interest only loans are usually cheaper with smaller lenders. So if you do have an interest only investment loan, it might be worth looking at some of these second and third tier lenders like Athena and ING that are usually 0.2 to 0.3% lower on their rates compared to the major lenders. Now, current interest rates, owner occupied, we're looking at 5.99% as our lowest possible variable rate. That requires that your loan to value ratio is either 50 or 60%, which means you own at least half of the property. Uh, so it doesn't um, suit um, um, the majority of clients, um, but interest rates starting from 5.99% is where we're looking at. I think the majority of clients right now are getting anywhere between 6.15 and 6.2%. Uh, for variable investment rates, we're looking at 6.24%. And for those keen on fixed rates, we have started to see some banks start to lower their fixed rates. Uh, NAB uh, came out in the press about two weeks ago, lowering their uh, fixed rates by 0.6%, which is a massive decrease, but it's because they were uh, a lot higher than everyone else. So them lowering by 0.6 sounded like a big deal, but they're just getting back in line with um, what everyone else was doing. Um, so if you've got any questions, any concerns, uh, as always, please give us a call. I'd uh, love to have a chat. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be back to you guys. I believe the next Reserve Bank announcement is in September. So we'll speak soon. Thank you.